Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Dare oh dare, we have a doozy. Dillian White has tested positive in a VADA test ahead of what would have been a rematch with Anthony Joshua in a week's time at the time of recording. So what we'll do, we'll go through the official matchroom press release, we'll go through Dillian White's statement on social media, and then a couple of other things, because what's going to happen is Joshua's still on the card, is, he, is there going to be a replacement, or will someone else fill that void? First, starting with the official press release, you can see here on screen, Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White fight update, August 5th, 2023. It's a brief one. Today, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, VADA, informed Matchroom, the Association of Boxing Commissions and the British Boxing Board of Control, that Dillian White had returned adverse analytical findings as part of a random anti-doping protocol. In light of this news, the fight will be cancelled and a full investigation will be conducted. Further information on the event will follow. So just to note, VADA will not conduct the uh, investigation. VADA is just the testing body. It doesn't have any say on whether the fight goes ahead. So this is a decision that has obviously come from Matchroom itself, Eddie Hearn, the promoter of Matchroom, and also the British Boxing Board of Control, because this is a case of uh, there's a failed drug test, they have to take action. And this is not for the first time for Dillian White either. Remember, back in 2019, he was the A-side against Oscar Rivas. At that time, there was also an adverse finding and there was a secret hearing and he was allowed to actually fight after that hearing and Oscar Rivas was never told. But also, Dillian White has other form for this. He served a two-year drug ban way back early in his career, starting in 2012 to 2014, he was on a two-year ban. So this is three strikes now for Dillian White. And even though some people will say, look, we have to wait for all the facts, all that sort of stuff. Boxing with its drug testing is a strict liability system. If it's in your system, then you have to explain it. You failed a test. The onus is on you to prove your innocence. It is assumed that you're guilty by the substance being in your system. And at this point, we do not know what the substance is, but just it was there and it was something that shouldn't have been there. And given Dillian White has form for this in the past, it's not a good look. It looks like he's been trying to crib an advantage and try to obviously enhance his performance. So a lot of the sort of facts of the situation are going to sort of flow out in the wash with this one. But what we do know is there's a failed test and it's a strict liability system. So he is assumed guilty from the start. So it's now up to him to prove his innocence. So White on social media has says, I am shocked and devastated to learn of a report by VADA of adverse findings relating to me. I only learned of it this morning and I am still reacting to it. I've also just seen that the fight is being cancelled without having any chance to demonstrate my innocence before the decision was taken. Well, oh, that's actually pretty common. The whole thing with White having that um, secret hearing in 2019 is more uncommon. And you had a case where, you know, as the uh, A-side in 2019, uh, White got some uh, special privilege there. And also, you know, a different situation with the B-side in the fight with Anthony Joshua in 2019, Jarrell Miller also failed, uh, it was multiple tests, but uh, the fight was cancelled immediately. Uh, he also continues here, I can confirm without a shadow of a doubt that I have not taken the reported substance in this camp or any point in my life. I am completely innocent and asked to be given the time to go through the process of proving this without anybody jumping to conclusions or a trial by media. I insisted on 24-7 VADA testing for this fight as I have done voluntary and at my own expense for all of my fights for many, many years. This is not the first time that I have been reported as having an adverse finding for a substance which I have not taken. And as I did last time, I will again prove that I am completely innocent. In the meantime, all I can do is express my extreme disappointment to boxing fans who will miss out on what was sure to be a great event. Well, I would say just in terms of the 2019 incident, Fans really never knew what the full story was because it was a secret hearing and it wasn't sort of um, for the public in terms of um, information being disseminated. So we don't really know if Dillian White 
was innocent or anything like that. The fact is, there was something in his system then, but he was able to convince a panel that he should be able to fight. And at the same time, his opponent was never told that he did actually test um, dirty for a substance being in his system. So this is not a good look for Dillian White. And it's, it's kind of like a lot of these guys, when they test dirty, they will say what he's just said. He, they will come out with these sorts of statements and shock horror and all this sort of stuff. The thing is, it's a strict liability system. The onus is on him now to prove that, you know, it was there for some reason, like a, a tainted supplement or something like that. But when these tests do occur, people will naturally um, go to the point where he's taken something because that is actually a fact. If it's in a system, he's taken it. Uh, but yeah, there will be some other circumstances potentially. But it's up to him in a strict liability system to prove his innocence. And I'm sure there will be a trial by media, especially given it's not the first time. It's the third time. I mean, will, are we going to hear that he had a whole bunch of eggs or something like that? And the whole sort of ridiculousness with that recent Connor Ben situation? We don't know. But Dillian White will have to come out and actually prove his innocence. Whether people will believe what he has to say, that's another story. Because I think people will go 2019 and a previous ban, you know, early in his career, that the guy is obviously just not good at doping. People will say that. And I think a lot of boxing fans are realistic about that there's a lot of fighters that are taking substances, but some are just not good at, you know, obviously whatever protocols they're on to try to crib that advantage. A lot of fighters probably are dirty, but are not getting caught because the science of taking those um, substances and how you can do it is uh, improving um, every year and it can stay ahead of the curve of the drug testers. So what does this mean? Obviously, this is a, a, a real sort of um, late notice thing. One week out, you had um, different bits and pieces on social media from Joshua's management company, Matchroom, just uh, 12 hours before I recorded this video, one week to go. So this has all happened pretty quickly because initially I had wondered, you know, was the reason for Derek Chisora being added to the card? So potentially he could sort of um, slot in as a headliner. But obviously this has come out of the blue pretty quickly. Uh, Vada has notified everybody involved, Dillian White, the promoters, um, UCAD, everyone one that was involved in the fight in some sh shape or form and capacity so what will happen now so we've had dan Raphael, who's on twitter has said i'm told matchroom is seeking a replacement to fight joshua and hopes to keep the card on but it's a fluid situation well i guess in that sort of situation it's it's probably not going to be anyone that we really want to see um I guess there is potential that could they elevate Dempsey McKean up from the um, co-main event. He was facing Philip Hergovich. He's been a name that has been linked uh, to Anthony Joshua before. Possibly even Philip Hergovich, who's facing McKean in the co-main event. Uh, or maybe they could elevate someone else who is on the card. Derek Chisora has been added. But do we need to see that? No. But that would be a, a pretty decent payday for Chisora, I'm, so, um, I'm sure. Uh, and given the fighters in London, the O2, it's sold out. Derek Chisora has London fans. I mean, maybe they could swing that. But I think the, the thing is, for most boxing fans, we don't want to see that fight. Derek Chisora is washed as anything. Uh, and, and the fact he's on the card was kind of always a little bit strange to me anyway, because it was already a sellout. But he is a fighter under Anthony Joshua's management company. So, I mean, maybe that's a possibility. The other thing is, is they might have to go, OK, well, we've had this 12 week camp for Joshua. Maybe we should just uh, sort of pull back and not actually have him fight at short notice. Remember what happened last time in 2019 after Jarrell Big Pharmacy Miller popped dirty and was off the card. You had Andy Ruiz Jr. coming in at relatively short notice, about six weeks, and um, Joshua ended up getting beaten. And I noticed the, uh, the memes are already um, out here, as you can see on screen someone uh, ruthlessly going in on white on that tweet for uh, Dan Raphael so it's, it remains to be seen but the other option is if Joshua's not on the card would they have someone like Chisora versus Washington headlining it's not a great headliner I mean Derek Chisora is washed as anything it's the wash leading the washed here in this fight so yeah it, it kind of if Joshua's not on the card it, the, the card takes a massive dent I know some people are still pretty loyal to Chisora and think he's got something left but I think he's completely done as we've seen in some recent fights even the Washington fight is not a lot and obviously with uh, the the fight being cancelled we've had some people coming in saying look I will take that fight so we've got um 
Big Pharmacy Miller, Jarrell Miller, who famously failed three different tests in 2019 and lost the fight with Joshua. He is calling for the uh, the fight, saying unfinished business, period. He came to the USA one time, got his ass beat and never returned. So he wants the fight. Hazim Rachman, who uh, has uh, taken a couple of losses recently, he's also called out Joshua, saying boxing is the theater of the unexpected. Let's get it on Anthony Joshua. I mean, no one needs or wants to see that fight. I'm sorry, um, Hazim Ruckman Jr., but that's just not a fight fans want. But also, at you know, one week's notice, what can we expect? It's, you know, it's probably not going to be someone that we want to see. But in terms of if you're going to get someone who has an unbeaten record, has already been training, and is also on the on the card, maybe Dempsey McKean is an option. I think Philip Hergovic is the better fight. But I don't think there's the appetite to take that fight at short notice. Whereas McKean is less of a risk. So who knows what could happen here? Maybe you'd see a shuffling of the card and Derek Chisora to face um, Philip Hergovic and Joshua to face McKean. I don't know. There'll be some talks. Otherwise, they'll draft someone in. If they're going to keep Joshua on the card, it'll be someone who he will beat and comfortably. But Dillian White is expressing his innocence. The fight is cancelled with Anthony Joshua. This is his third run-in with the uh, the testers. So just to recap, so he had a ban of two years starting in 2012. 2019, he failed a test ahead of a fight with Oscar Rivas. And um, we didn't know this till after the fight. There had been a secret panel which had allowed him to fight. He says he was um, innocent and uh, was able to prove his innocence. But, I mean, I think for a lot of people, remember, the whole thing after that all um, broke was people said, where's the B sample? There was no disclosure to fans. And I guess with the systems and processes they had in place, they felt that there was nothing to be gained from saying anything further. In this instance, Dillian White is the B side. You've had Anthony Joshua, you know, with this testing in place and um, Dillian White has been caught. He says he's innocent, that um, the facts will come out. He says he does not want to trial by media. But look, this is the third time. Uh, Obviously, people are going to talk and say that Dillian White is guilty and the fact that is a strict liability system he is basically said to be guilty by having it in his system now it's up to him to prove that he's not can he who knows who cares uh the fact is third third time i think a lot of people are probably not going to have a lot of patience uh and sympathy for any statements of white apart from his loyal loyal fans what do you make of the situation it's imploded within a week of the fight drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out